Look at these pots. What do you see? What can they tell us about their creator? If we look closely, they are a window into the world of African-American potter Thomas W. Comerau. The pots are stamped with his name, the location of his pottery, and his signature swags and tassels. They also testify to his determination to craft a life for himself and his family as free American citizens. Collectors and historians long assumed that Comerau was a white craftsman. Then, in 2003, researcher Brant Zipp discovered a census record that identified him as black. Further research revealed that Comerau and his family had been enslaved by master potter William Crolius. Crolius emancipated the family in 1779 when Thomas was just a boy. Young Comerau might have trained in one of the Crolius potteries. In the mid-1790s, he lived near their workshops in the vicinity of today's City Hall. By 1797, he had relocated to Corlears Hook on the East River. He lived there with his family and owned and operated his business until 1819. Comerau was actively engaged in the early anti-slavery movement and sang hymns at an 1809 celebration of the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade to the United States. He also assisted fellow Black Americans, such as 21-year-old Peter Johnson, to exercise their right to vote. However, legal freedom didn't necessarily mean equality for New York's African Americans. Comerau grew frustrated by the growing suppression of the rights of free Black men. He also suffered financial setbacks and decided to sell his property at Corlear's Hook. Comerau sought a new beginning. In 1820, he joined the American Colonization Society's first attempt to relocate free Black volunteers to Sierra Leone. There, they hoped to forge lives free of discrimination and racial injustice. Comerau and his extended family, including his second wife, Anne, and their three children, endured a difficult five-week voyage aboard the ship Elizabeth. The settlers confronted greater difficulties upon their arrival in Sierra Leone. Tropical fevers and bad water sickened many settlers. 22 colonists died within the first year, including Comerau's wife, Anne. Discouraged by the failed promise of a better life in Africa, Comerau and his children returned to the U.S. in 1822. They sailed to Baltimore, where Comerau died the following year. His sons, William and Thomas, returned north to establish families and businesses. Through his descendants and his surviving stoneware, Comerau left an enduring legacy.